everyone, this is Jen from Scrapping Posh and I am here today with an artistic studio creation design team project and we are going to take these scraps from the Sir Vagabond 8x8 and I'm going to make them into um, 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 quilted cards. So the first thing that we want to do, because I'm making small cards, a, I never remember, a two? They're five and a half by four and a quarter. Is you want to cut these scraps down to, I'm going to say no more than three quarters of an inch, half inch if you can manage. And I'm using the smaller cutter instead of my cutter pillar because um, the cutter pillar only goes down to an inch. So that is a minus on the cutter pillar. So I try and link all my tools below. Uh, there is the tools, of course, that I use from ASC Supplies and the product, and then my other links are Amazon affiliate links, just so you know. doesn't cost you anything else, but if you have an Amazon Prime account and you're going to get some goodies, please use my links. So, there's two here. First thing we're going to do is cut down all these strips and you've seen I did not have a lot of strips left so we're not going to make too many cards so it shouldn't take very long and Chantelle from the ASC design team I will uh, link her channel down below she is growing her subscriber count so please subscribe to her also and um, yeah she's she made these on a live video and Ever since then, we've just kind of been, you know, making these with all of our scraps because everybody loves to use all of their scraps. I'm not saying everybody. Maybe I'm weird. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I have all these little strips and then I have some cut-aparts, which I'm going to keep to the side because I want to use those cut-aparts. And then also, when you're making cards... If you have strips left over from your pattern paper or from your solids, you can always use those too. And actually it adds some, I don't know, difference. <laughs> it adds some interest to have some solids there. And I especially like the, the neutral solids. So the really long strips I typically, like these are already cut to size, the really long strips I typically use for gussets so I don't throw anything away. Uh, whenever I make a 3D project I always use gussets for the sides. So I just cut them all to an inch and then score them in half and I keep them in a container which is right in front of me, I'll show you. This container here and I score them in half, and then when I need a gusset, I reach in there for it. So that's what I do with my long scraps of paper. These are already cut to a good size. So anything under an inch isn't going to do me any good for anything else. And then these little small ones I always cut. So just go through your stash and find your strips. And then I have a different card that I found online. It's not the same as the one Chantel did, but it is also a paper folding card. And I'll show you how to do that one. So the first thing I did was I took two sheets of 8.5 by 11 paper and I cut them in half. So now they are eight, eight and a half by five and a half. And we're going to score those in half. And these are going to be the card bases. Now these are, you score them at four and a quarter. These are 65 pound cardstock, so they're not the best thickness 
for cards, but if you mat the front and the back with 65 pound cardstock, then it they hold up just fine. Okay, that's all the scoring I'm going to be doing. take all the scraps that I have and these are the scraps that were left over from the album and then I have a blue scrap here that was left over from I think a Lavinia card that I matted <coughs> excuse me and I cut all my bigger scraps down to uh, eight five and a half by four and a quarter and then I cut those down um, to five and a quarter quarter by four so they're a quarter inch smaller than the actual card so they fit with a border around them just like that so I'm going to take these and this is what we're going to make our cards out of so first because I am horribly lazy I am covering the entire thing in ATG tape. You can glue each piece individually if you want and you may actually end up having to add a little more tape on there but it beats for me it beats the alternative which is adding uh, glue to each strip because I am not that motivated. Okay so this is Chantel's method. You take this strip and you go right across the card diagonally and then kind of break up my paper we're going to take a strip uh, of the paper and it's gonna go I always go off to the right a little it fits up perpendicular at a 90 degree angle to this one and then turn the card or don't turn the card doesn't really matter and then I'm going to go 90 degree angle to this side and I offset it a little bit. There we go. Now from there you're going to go perpendicular to the piece you just put down. And all four sides and just make sure that if, you, if you're cut square these are going to work out perfectly. And if you use a dark paper behind or a complementary color paper, if it peeks through, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I wouldn't use like a white piece of paper on the back of this because it wouldn't go with anything. So just perpendicular to what you just did all the way around. And now the next one goes perpendicular to what you just did. And of course, if you like aged these or um, distressed them, that would be cool too. I've done some distressed. So perpendicular. We'll use, we'll use this one. Perpendicular. Uh, my all small scraps. Here's some. Ooh, let's use a black perpendicular. A smaller one. And then I have this little piece here. We're going to either need some glue. I'll just ATG it again. And let's do... I have these little tiny squares over here. Perfect for this. And then... See, I put that one down, then that one, so this one goes here. <laughs> Sometimes you have to stop and reevaluate. This one. And you just do it until you fill it up. And get some smaller strips in there, too. And then I'm just going to leave that purple show. It's not even worth putting anything on it. Got another black 
here. Leave that purple, that's fine. Put another purple strip here. Okay, and then the cool stuff, you can use your um, cutter if you want, but I just take a pair of scissors and go straight across. And all these things that are falling off right now, you can use on your next card. And I will show you what I'm talking about. they call it in the Facebook group just for quilted cards so if you make your quilted cards go to the album and put uh, put your quilted card in the album for Chantel okay so there is this card simply glue the card base to the back I recommend putting another piece of paper in. I'm going to put it so that this angel dude wing guy is facing the right direction. And then you can put a sentiment here. I have one that says travel journal. It's a little too big though. Or I have, I like this guy. I like him. So we're going to glue him on there. And he's just one of the little cut apart. How much fun is that? Right in the middle. But you can always stamp your sentiment this way across that middle one. Typically you leave that one um, a solid so that you can do that. Okay, so there's that. That is the card that Chantel showed us, so check that out. My next card start with a one and a half inch by one and a half inch square. I need to make me one of those. Take two. Sorry, you guys can't see this. It's kind of hanging off the bottom, but it's where I'm cutting this piece of paper to one and a half by one and a half inch. Fill the card with tape or whatever adhesive you want that's not going to dry on you. And I'm out of adhesive. I have some score tape somewhere right in front of me. We'll just use that. It's a little overkill in my opinion, but Crystal loves using score tape, so it can't be all bad. Okay, good enough. Anything that we need, uh, we'll just glue after this. Okay, so what we're going to try and do is position the square in the middle, diagonally like a diamond, about right there. Then. We're going to take our paper strips and start at the corner. And if I can find who did this method first, I'll post it below. I have a purple one here. You just butt it up against this one perpendicular. Turn again. Put this one up against here. Actually, I have a whole bunch left over. There's a small one to add interest. Different sizes are cool. There we go. I don't want to use a black one. And you just go all the way around. Okay, and then we'll put this here. Change it up. 
and then you turn it and you put the next one perpendicular to the one you just placed and you just keep going. Got a black one here. We have some small pieces for when we get to the end too. So And at any point in time, you can stop and cut these off. And use the, the rest of them. So like now if I wanted to like stop and I was out of paper, cut these off. The ones that were used twice, they're pretty much too small to use and they're at the wrong angle. But the ones that it's our first time using, we have lots of room left here. Okay. So now we have more pieces that we can use. get to the very ends you can use up some of your small small pieces. That was too small. And the very corner here we're gonna have the glue. So there we are. That is the second quilted card. I'm going to go ahead and use up the rest of this paper and make some more and I will show you pictures when I'm done. But card base. Not with that though. Good thing I just got some more glue. Part or even put him on there, I think he'll get lost. So this is probably one that's good just the way that it is. Or like here's a some kind of compass. Like you can cut around it and yeah. So there's the two cards that we made, and I'm gonna make like I said, I'll make the rest of these, and I will show you guys what I did. Okay, so one more paper quilting technique, and I wanted to use some cut apart, so, um, is to not lose the cut apart in the pattern that we already created, is to just use a strip. So, when you're using a strip, you don't have to do the entire uh, pattern. You can just use straight strips so and it's even good for the use of the ones that you've used on your quilted cards that we made 
previously because they have these angles on them that aren't 90 degrees. So you take a piece, and this just happens to be a five and a quarter by two and a quarter ish or two and a half. And but it can be any size you want. I just figured that that would be a good size to put across the top of a card. So uh, I suggest the five and a quarter definitely. And then I'm just going to put this diagonally. And it doesn't have to be perfect diagonal, 45 degree or anything like that. It just has to be an angle that's pleasing to you and something to start off to stack up against here. And here. So we just go across. And you just butt up against the, the one that you just did. And then you turn it and do the same. That one's not long enough for what I just put that on. Okay, here we go. Um, I still not, that one's not going to be long enough. Let's do another black strip. corner here we'll glue on make sure it doesn't fall off and there we go and then turn this over and cut off you can use your paper trimmer for this I'm not doing a very good job here. And there we go. So there's that, and that is the paper quilting part of this card. And I feel like I need a piece of purple under it, but I don't have one long enough to frame the whole thing. Mm. Yeah, let's just do that. So this one is cut at four by five and a quarter so they're the same lengths and you can cut this shorter if you wanted to give you a little bit of border on e either side I think we'll be okay with that and then Now we can put our guy down here and he is going to stand out a lot more than if we would have used him on the full paper quilting. Okay, so he's going to go right here. And you can put gears or whatever on there. So there's my other card. And we still have more scraps.